out, grab a drink. I just made myself a coffee. These are some new beans that I'm trying to dial in. It's tasting notes of a set of white grape, bergamot, and brown sugar, I think. And it's not bad. It's more like a sweeter versus the fruity ones that I usually get. It's pretty good. I think this would be really great for fall time with like pumpkin spice syrup or chestnut praline or something. Cannot wait, you guys. Fourth of July is over. And my mind is already already thinking of like the cold weather it's gonna be a hot minute until we get cooler weather here but next week we're supposed to get high of 80s and low of 60s and I'm like thank goodness and today it thunderstormed and it rained because it's just been so hot like 96 there's it's not even that hot like so for some of you guys it's like in the hundreds it's just too much for me it's too much but i hope everybody had a safe great july 4th my husband had to work all these three days so we, this is like probably the first year we didn't watch fireworks as a family. I'm in a new area and they weren't doing anything local here. So I didn't want to drive like 40 minutes to a new place with the kids by myself. By the way, I'm letting my kids watch The Tooth Fairy. It's Friday night movie night. And I was like, hey, do you guys want to watch The Tooth Fairy? So I let them watch the preview. And they're like, yeah, they're old enough where they kind of like, like the real people movies, they call them, not like the cartoons. I haven't watched The Tooth Fairy in a long time. I probably should should have sat down and watched it with them. But I thought instead I'm just going to sit down and chat with you guys. I didn't want to go somewhere with my kid, with the kids by myself like at 9, 10 o'clock at night and then have to like drive home almost an hour. And everybody, like all my other family members, they're either busy or they're out of town. One brother's in Europe, the other brother's in New York. My sister's super busy, she can't. And that's just basically everybody that I have here. My sister-in-law's sister so my brother's wife's sister invited me over and we swam with the kids in the pool and then I came home so that was nice I'm mentioning all of that because I feel like a lot of times with social media like I, even today I was sitting on snapchat and everybody's different this is definitely like a personal thought of mine I'm not saying this is true all across the board but I'll be going through snapchat I don't have Instagram anymore and I'm actually glad because I feel like it was just too much, too much keeping up with the Joneses. And I wasn't necessarily using it to keep up with the Joneses, but in a way it inadvertently affected me because it allowed me to see what everybody was doing all times, every single day. And then at the same time, I would like be posting all times, every single day. And it was just, it was too much. It kind of took away from the reality. I personally don't miss it and I don't see myself going back, but I do have Snapchat still because I have like my friend group that I talk to, sometimes my sister and family members. And I'll sometimes go through the stories on there and I'll see like everybody was on a boat. I feel like everyone and their mom was on a boat this is July 4th, watching the fireworks, seeing everybody's fireworks. And I feel like in the past, I probably would have gotten major FOMO and felt like I was definitely missing out and oh man, I'm sitting here by myself, I'm not doing anything, we're not watching fireworks, I wish I was, but I'm looking at life from a different perspective. This year we literally didn't do anything and I'm totally fine with it. Like I had my kids, we spent time together, we had a great time and for them it's like the little things. That's kind of what I wanted to sit down and talk about is FOMO with social media and then social media being its own reality that sometimes we can follow people so much that it almost takes away from the joy and the little moments in our own life and I feel like a lot of times that's what happened at least for me again this is very personal to me but I felt like the little things in my life that every day it just became mundane and boring and not special because I was constantly bombarded with information from other people's lives just in general all this stuff from social media like it's like alternate realities like every app is its own virtual reality like TikTok is its own reality Instagram is its own reality Facebook YouTube I'm glad I took a step back in the beginning of this year I feel like for me it was definitely necessary and allowed me to be a lot more present in my actual real life like social media is not real life and I feel like I really blurred the lines over the years so don't feel FOMO if you know, you're watching people on their trips or whatever and you feel like, oh, my life is really not that great. It is. Your life is that great. And you have to look at it from a different perspective and in enjoy the little things that make your life what it is. I completely understand, though, that there are situations that people go through that are very difficult, very hard. A lot of us can't comprehend. So I get that. I'm not trying to speak on that or trying to say, you know, anything on that. Well, I'm just spilling but I do want to speak to the people that perhaps were like me and you get so enveloped in social media and the lives of other people where your own life almost starts to be a little bit dim you know so my entire goal of my channel is to just show that every day the mundane the boring and make it for what it is 
and have a different perspective on that. Life doesn't have to be extravagant to be worthwhile, you know? Life is short, y'all. Life is short. But I did also want to sit down and have a conversation. This is going to be just straight up chatty talking vlog. Something that I was thinking about is when we immigrated here to America and like the life that we had. Life has changed a lot since we moved here, like immigrated here. A lot like life in America has changed a lot the opportunities are not the same now as they were before but I am very grateful for the life that I was able to have here I completely understand there were a lot of blessings in my life but I did want to talk about kind of like basically uh, the memories of how we immigrated here and flashbacks and all that I'm not really gonna go into detail because there's a lot of details that my parents were telling me but some of them I forget like in-depth details I'm gonna have to sit down and like do a video video recording interview with them while they're still here so I can have it on camera forever I'd highly recommend that if your parents are still alive and they have like a lot of stories to tell Ew, there's like a fruit fly or something but I came here when I was three prior to that we lived in Belarus my parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents I believe. My dad grew up I think a few years after the World War II, the World War II, after World War II ended. He was born I think before, a few years before it ended. And then the Soviet Union, the whole USSR regime took place basically his whole entire life up until a year before I was born. So they grew up under the Soviet Union. And if you know the Soviet Union, you know that there was a lot of um, religious persecution under that in the sense of they kind of wanted to abolish all religions, especially Christianity, basically eradicate religions. And my parents, my grandparents, they definitely experienced a lot of persecution and like harassment, bullying, like in schools. If you were known to be a Christian, you'd definitely be heavily harassed, sometimes fail for no reason. The teacher could, the teacher would harass you and the students if you didn't, you know, abide by their whatever they were doing and not just that also churches and gatherings there was definitely a lot of persecution so a lot of slavics they came here for religious freedoms and i will say that compared to how they grew up there the amount of freedom we've experienced like i can't even relate to the stories that my parents tell me like having to hide bibles and having to like break up gatherings because somebody would come in and just like so many crazy stories or like my dad would tell me when he was growing up like he they didn't even have chocolate this is like not religious persecution but this is like growing up in in that time during like world war ii just ended and like he remembers somebody gave him like a piece of chocolate and he like savored it like crazy and i'm over here like a whole basket of chocolate trying not to eat it because you know i will and it's just such a different upbringing and lifestyle it's like black and white black and white like when we came here and the comfort we had and the freedom that we had to be able to gather and praise God and assemble and all my Slavic friends if you're watching we all kind of have the same story if you are a believer as well we all kind of came within the same time frame kind of experienced the same lifestyle and our parents kind of experienced the same lifestyle even coming to America we all kind of assembled in communities and some people in New York my husband like for example they went to Philadelphia some people in California whatever but we all kind of grew up in communities like even the church I grew up in it was called first called the Slavic Pentecostal Church because it was like straight up Slavic so it was just such a huge community um, so you kind of grew up in that like all my friends I had my childhood friends obviously I went to public schools and stuff so it was a very diverse school but a lot of us basically had the same like we all have very similar stories to tell so I'm definitely very thankful for the religious freedoms that we had here that we didn't have to experience what our parents did and the crazy thing is is they were so solid in their faith like so solid so unwavering just praying having prayers all the time and i feel like we got so comfortable i'm not speaking for everybody but just as like a generalized statement that when you're so comfortable and you know you're just like living your life it's so easier to live your life and be comfortable and like oh i'm a christian and i'm living my life versus them it was like it was like their source of life of joy of peace because they didn't have that in materialism they had that in their hearts and in their souls so it's just amazing to like sit down and talk and hear the stories i basically grew up in america like i said i came here when i was three i was three and a half but because of the community like a slavic community and then our parents like 
my mom barely speaks English, so we had no choice but to talk to Russian to them. Even now, I cannot talk to my parents in English. My Some of my friends, they do. Like, their parents are a lot more Americanized. My parents are definitely, they were older, first of all. Like, my dad's going to be 80 this year. That's crazy to think about. So my parents were older also. My dad went to college. When he came here, he went to college. I think he was like 55. He went to college for an electrical engineer. He ended up getting another job. But it's just crazy to think about. Like you come to a new country with nothing. You leave everything. My dad actually planned to go back. It was not, we were not supposed to stay here permanently. He's like, okay, I'm gonna come to America because of Chernobyl and everything. I'm just gonna come here for a little bit and then we're gonna go back once everything's good. And here we are, I'm 32 years old, <laughs> almost. 30 years later, it's crazy what our parents did. Like props to them, the things that they've gone through in life, like the struggles that we can't even relate to in the life that they gave us. Like I'm not, I don't live this luxurious, crazy life, but they always pushed how important it is to get an education. We all went to college, you know, got married. We all have our own families, our own homes. And it's just amazing. Like, praise be to God and glory to him. He definitely deserves all the glory. Finishing off my coffee, so. I'm probably gonna finish the video here because that's already a lot of talking but that's kind of one story that I wanted to share let me know down below if you guys have anything else that you'd like to share any life stories this is basically like a mini mini life story I hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for hanging out and I hope to see you guys in future videos